Welcome to Introduction to Philosophy of the Human Person, topic 4.1. And in this lesson, we will be learning about how is knowledge acquired. Last time, uh, we discussed the nature of knowledge as justified true belief. At ngayon naman po ang pag-aaralan natin is how is knowledge acquired? Paano ba tayo nakaka-acquire ng knowledge natin? Okay, let's skip that. Let's skip that. Question, what do you know and how do you know it? Or can you give me at least one thing you know and how do you know it? Anong alam mo at paano mo ito nalaman? At, at very essential itong question na ito sa pag-aaralan natin ngayon. So, most of the time kapag tayo ay nagbibigay ng knowledge claim, Ang tawag doon is what we call propositional knowledge. But let us go back and define what is a proposition. Propositions are declarative statements that appear to describe states of affairs or facts through the proposition can be true or false. For example, both whales are mammals. Okay, so for example, both uh, whales are mammals at saka 5 plus 5 equals 13. So these two are propositions even though the 5 plus 5 equals 13 is incorrect. However, itong whales are mammals at saka 5 plus 5 equals 13, both of them are indeed propositions. So things that we know are what we call or are called propositional knowledge. So for example, yung, yung I know that 1 plus 1 equals 2. So yung, yung statement na yun, that is a propositional knowledge. Okay. Now, how is knowledge acquired? And uh, if we are not yet familiar with Immanuel Kant, uh, there are two uh, ways how we acquire propositional knowledge. Okay? First one is a priori and second one is a posteriori, also pronounced as a posteriori or a priori. Whatever pronunciation, pronunciation you are comfortable uh, with. Okay. Both Latin phrases were popularized by Immanuel Kant's critique of pure reason, one of the most influential works in the history of philosophy and boy, according to Wikipedia. Immanuel Kant is one of the single most important philosophers to have ever lived. His work forever changed the shape of Western philosophy. Born on April 22nd, 1724. Okay, so we're not going to deal with the details of Immanuel Kant. At least, meron lang po tayong idea kung, kung saan galing itong a priori and a posteriori na terminologies na ito. So, how is knowledge acquired? Unahin po natin yung a priori or non-empirical. Pag sinabi nating empirical, ibig sabihin nito through experience. At kapag non-empirical naman, apart from experience. So, nakita natin dito, yung a priori is non-empirical. So, ibig sabihin, where knowledge is possible independently or knowledge is acquired independent or prior to any experience and requires only the use of reason. Knowledge of logical truths, yan po ay example sa a priori and of abstract claims. So for example, um, 1 million plus 1 million equals 2 million. So hindi ko kailangan bilangin ang 1 million na stones and another 1 million stones in order for me to arrive to certain truth that there are actually 2 million stones. I know that through a priori reasoning. Okay? So yung po yung example sa knowledge acquired through a priori, through the use of reason. You are already presupposing these laws of logic which we will be dealing uh, later on. So, yun po ang a priori. There are things that we already know to be true even before uh, observation or uh, 
senses perception, senses observation actually happens. So, may mga bagay na na alam tayo. Kaya, yun, ang, tawag sa, ang tawag sa knowledge na yun na alam natin, apart from any experience, is what we call a priori. And next one, the next one is a posteriori or empirical, where knowledge is possible or knowledge can be acquired only subsequent or posterior to certain sensory experience in addition to the use of reason. So, in incorporate naman din ni a posteriori, a posteriori, ang reasoning. However, meron kasamang ano, through the use of our certain sensory experience, we know that these things are indeed true. Okay? And we believe in these things to be true. Example, knowledge of the color or shape na project na nakikita kasi natin ng ating mga mata, uh, yung shape, uh, yung texture of a physical object or knowledge of geographical location. So if if wala kang experience na pumuntang Manila, say for example, wala kang experience na pumuntang Manila at may nagtanong sa iyo, saan banda yung recto? Okay, since wala kang experience paano actually magpuntang recto, then wala kang maibibigay na accurate na sagot. Therefore, hindi mo alam sa madaling salita because wala kang experience na nakapunta ka doon. So, yun yung mga bagay na need mo ma-experience para magkaroon ka ng certain knowledge about that particular knowledge claim. Okay? Now, Kung ikaw naman ay nakapunta na, of course, mas madali mong mabigyan ng instruction ang nagtatanong sa inyo kung nasaan yung recto or nasaan yung bagyo kasi nakarating ka na. If you haven't been there yet, then of course you cannot describe saan sasakay. So kasi wala kang experience eh. Diba? So same thing with food. Same thing with food. So kapag ikaw ay nagluluto, um... Meron mga meron mga magagaling talaga sa pagluluto na kahit kahit na hindi latikman is nakukuha nila yung tamang lasa. But for us na hindi talaga cook at hindi sanay, ang ginagamit natin na na para ma, pa, para malaman natin na talagang tama na yung timpla is paano tinitikman natin through the use of our sensory experiences. So how is knowledge acquired? A priori Apart from experience, but through reason, we can arrive to truth. And a posteriori, through empirical or through experience. And doon lamang po nagtatapos ang lesson sa subject 4.1. Maraming maraming salamat po.